Now, I got a question for you. Uh-huh. All right. Can you go to the book of Galatians? That's not the Torah, brother. I'm still going. Is I'm we going to what Paul wrote? I, I do not. I, I do not view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. I, I do not view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. I, I do not view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. Do not. I, I do not view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. So, Shalom. Shalom. Uh, first thing and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor. This duty, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash. Um, I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect, noise in the gospel, broad lifting up the standard of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, this is just a quick lesson through the spirit. As the Sakari guys, uh, that's the head guy that goes by the name of <laughs> High Chief Priest. Alazar, chief priest, right? Okay, if you say so. But then again, you know, hey, you have cult of personalities like the Apostle Gobar <clears throat> went into the mindset of a cult of personality. When you're appearing to take on these characteristics and you self-endow yourself with these extravagant titles and then people uh, they adapt themselves to it and then before you know it, a person makes themselves a god or an entity. And that's pretty much what you think about when you look at these groups. Like I've made a very, uh, made an analysis. Um, and I've done a video a few times about when you think of these other groups, you think of the leaders instead of your how about Shimi how shot. And people can say the same thing about Great Millstone out of spite. They can say, well, when you say Great Millstone, you think of the apostles. Well, yeah, you think of the apostles because they pushing your how about Shimi how shot. But you would never see the apostles in the light of self gain or you know uh, uh gloating or you know just this 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 demigod like behavior but instead you know they be hide behind the scriptures as we're told to okay so when you think of iuic you think of nate as they call him king nathaniel <laughs> when you think of sakari you think of alazar you think of uh ISUPK, you think of johanna you think of uh uh, what's this guy's name? You think of HOI, I believe, or AOI, you believe, you think of High Priest Zabak, you know. But regardless of it, this is focusing on this guy, Alazar, which he basically stated he doesn't view the epistles of Paul as being authoritative. And honestly, that could just be a matter of conjecture on his behalf because, I mean, if that's his opinion, then that's his opinion. He can have it, but it doesn't make it right. Okay, because Romans the third chapter say that if some didn't believe, does that make the truth of the Most High Allah? No, God forbid, make the word of the Yahweh Bashim Shai true in every man a liar. So at the end of the day, he can say what he wants to say or believe whatever the hell he wants to believe. It doesn't make him right. And that doesn't disannul the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay, because Paul clearly gave, okay, he went up into Jerusalem, I believe, to seek counsel of the elders, I believe, two different times. You can read about that in Galatians, the first chapter, and I believe the second chapter, when uh, basically to make sure he was on point with the doctrine. And also about the revelation he was given about the Gentiles. Also, when you go into Acts 15 chapter, there was a council. So Paul was very well in touch with the elders in Judea at the time to, to, to make sure he was on point because there's an order and there's a ranking thing here. Okay, it's an order thing. And if he's following the spirit of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, though the Lord gave him the bigger portion, he still had respect into the, the, into the circumcision because he knew that was his place. Okay, so this guy, man, his biggest gripe, the reason why he does away with the letters of Paul, okay, or anything relating to that is because when you go into the book of Hebrews, I believe the second chapter goes into a better covenant, a more perfect priesthood, which is after the order of Mechizedek, which Mechizedek is actually Yahweh Shai, okay, when he was a friend to Abraham, and Abraham gave him a tenth of all things, okay, now how the hell do you think that the priesthood was learned? Okay, because when you look at the Levitical priesthood, Mechizedek existed way before then, and that order of the Levitical priesthood was directly taken from the order that was established through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai throughout time, even before we had the actual Levitical priesthood into play. You already had a priesthood. Okay, this is how Adam knew how to name the animals, this is how they knew the laws, this is how they knew how things were passed down, this is how they understood the name, this is how they knew about ritualistic ceremonies, and the list goes on. 
Okay, so the priesthood has already been intact, but it was a more perfect form. Okay, because in the beginning, you had the perfect priesthood because, hey, we was without sin or corruption before we got endowed with these philosophies. So where did the Levitical priesthood on earth or the earthly tabernacle come into play at before uh, the perfection? Huh? Because then it say that uh, the Adam, the first Adam was made a living soul, but this one is a quickening spirit. So the first order will be done and the second order will be like a more perfect perfection. See, Jake don't think. Jake wants to take it all upon himself. And ultimately, we've been telling you that these Sakari dudes, man, they don't believe in Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, just study the history. They didn't follow Yahweh Shai. They thought his stands on the Roman Empire was that of weak and cowardice. Okay, they didn't stand behind him because they felt like it was too much of a passive approach, you know? So anyway, um, what is this? Hold on one second. Hands on AD training 215. Salaki, I'm reading my email from work. Okay. Salaki, Salaki. But anyway, so um, I got an article here real quick, but this is the reason why we tell you Jake's out there, man. Hey, y'all want to follow these guys, man? Then follow them. But at the end of the day, the Most High is going to break these groups up and he's going to destroy a lot of these men. Okay, because I'm just my personal opinion. I don't believe he's a man of the Lord. I never believed. I never thought he was a man of the Lord or anybody in that group for any factor. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have any sincere brothers. In that congregation, you know, because I'm sure you have some sincere men, but most of those guys in, in that group, they're really, they're really uh, captivated by that cult of personality, you know, so, and I'll just leave it at that, because I mean, I could go all day on how the fuck, how, how off they are in the doctrine, and you know, we can go all day with that, but this is a matter of just addressing this point, and we're going to keep it short and sweet, all right, but I want to bring the scripture out real quick, this is the book of uh, Galatians 1. And I'm going to start at verses six, because it's the perversion of the gospel. And we know that gospel means good news. So it says here, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that calls you into the grace of the anointed unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of the anointed. And this is what these guys are doing. OK, ultimately, the Sakari is perverting the gospel. Yeah, how about you? How was shy? And they behind they hide behind that name. But overall, they don't really agree with the with the order that Yahweh Shai set up. Okay, for one thing, to say that Apostle Tahar needs to step down and that he's the current ruling high chief priest. Well, you got to understand, bro, the chief priests and the scribes are the ones that put Yahweh Shai and led him up to death. Okay, it was the chief priest that had a problem with Yahweh Shai and the wicked scribes and Pharisees. Okay, even, uh, uh, even uh, what's his name, uh, Pilate. Even he washed his hands of the, of the Lord's blood because he's like, look, I don't find no fault in this man. But it was you niggas that assisted on getting the Lord crucified. And me personally, I believe that IUIC, Sakari, all I believe you guys directly in the ancient room had a lot to do with our Lord being put to death, which is all prophetic anyway. It was through the scriptures. But if you are somehow in some way partook in the shedding of the blood of the Messiah, then you guys are going to pay for it on this side, man. OK, and the way that this society is going. Hey, I don't. I see a lot of Israelites getting shook up. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I see a lot of men getting dispersed. I see a lot of men denying the faith. I see a lot of men uh, giving up on this thing. I see a lot of men falling out before Passover, after Passover. Hey, after this Passover, is going to be some shit. You know, and this may be our final one here. The way things are looking, it's not looking too bright for America. And you guys are still playing with the gospel, man. But it says here. Which is not another, but there be some of, of that that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of the anointed. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which he have, we have preached unto you, let him be a curse, man. So if he wasn't authoritative, why would he even why would he put a curse on himself? OK, because you had a lot of men that came up and spoke things that really wasn't in any type of position of authority. You had phony Israelites out there. You had men like when you go back into uh, what they call the story of Bar Jesus. You know, when the, oh, the Simon the Sorcerer or whatever you want to call it, basically, um, <laughs> he was going around betwixting people or bewitching people for money like he was some great deep dude or some great erratic orator, faking like he's curing demons and raising the dead, but he was a damn fraud.
Okay, you had men like that. You had men that wanted to be false messiahs and stuff like that. Like, hey, the Book of Clarence shows you that. Hey, his mind said in the beginning, he was like, I'm going to be the new messiah. You had jakes like that in the ancient world that didn't have any authority, so to speak. But Paul spoke with authority and he taught because, hey, he didn't teach anything different than the other than the other 12. Okay, so he said, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you then. Than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. So, hey, that's a pretty bold statement to make a statement like that to say, well, look, if we going off, then let us be a curse. Now, let's look up the word a curse real quick. Get some understanding on it. OK. And we're going to go through the list of definitions here. OK. A curse goes into the Greek word uh, athenema, which means a thing set up or laid in order to be kept. A specifically an offering resulting from a vow. Now, a vow is something that you can, you know, like a vow is like a agreement or something you vow or pray to the Lord that you're going to do. Okay, like an agreement, almost like a covenant, so to speak. It says, which after being consecrated to a God was hung upon the walls or columns of the temple or put in some other conspicuous place. It says a thing devoted to the Most High without hope of being redeemed down. Okay. It says, and if any animal to be slain, therefore a person or thing doomed to destruction, a curse, a man, a curse devoted to the desires or dirty or direst of woes. So you guys are going to be straight up a curse. You're basically putting a curse on yourself by saying that, man. OK, because you see you're preaching a different gospel. Oh, I don't believe the words of a Paul or authority. Now, he said he don't believe that. Now, does that mean that we supposed to follow suit to him with him? I'm not saying he's saying that he may don't believe that. But at the same time, if you don't believe that, then that means that you shouldn't push that gospel on Israel. Because you got actually men that follow you that may really believe in this thing. And you're sending them down the dark hole, man. Okay. Because we know what Paul says. The fact we know that it's authoritative. For one thing, he, how can you not believe what Paul said to be authoritative when in fact that what Paul did, you were engaging in the same very fucking work that he did. Like, honestly speaking, Paul went to the Gentiles and bought them uh, back to the understanding of the law, statutes and commandments. OK, and, and <laughs> the Gentile Ephesians 2 and 11. Hey, you you a part you a part of that awakening, man. So for you to say that what he's doing is not authoritative, meaning that you don't really believe in your in your in your in your awakening. You don't really believe in it. Because look, look at what Apostle Tahar did. How the hell you find out you was an Israelite? Who did you come under first? You came under a great millstone. If you look at what Apostle Tahar started through the spirit, I mean, I'm almost, okay, I would say what he has done through the spirit since coming on YouTube and just all over time. Hey, Apostle Tahar was literally like the apostle that was sent to the Gentiles because a lot of us woke up off the YouTube videos, man, or coming across a camp. Me, I had the privilege and the honor to run into actual brothers to learn the truth, okay? I didn't catch it on YouTube first. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of brothers came in through the ministry through YouTube. And these were all men that was uncircumcised. They didn't know the commandments. And look, what Apostle Tahar did through the Spirit, the Spirit used him, here we all are today with the rest of the other apostles and their work. And you're part of that same stock. So for you to say that what Paul was saying was not authoritative, then why the hell are you believing that the elders got the sound doctrine then because when i look at paul's works and i look at what the apostles is it's parallel man if you got a spiritual eye to see that and then again i may have said too much so salak you but that was just a you know just a nugget that throw out there but anyway it says let him be a curse as we said before so i say now any man preach any other gospel which you're doing Unto you then that ye have received, let him be a curse, man. And you didn't receive that. Okay, you never received that twisted revelation on what Paul's words is not authoritative. Then okay, then turn in your garment, man. Well, your t-shirt with your fringes on it. Stop calling on the name of your how about shy. You know, because one thing that really that's really bothersome is when you got a lot of guys, man, when things don't work out in their favor or to their benefit, then they start twisting shit. Okay, like these Boston guys, man, all of a sudden now. They linking up with these other clowns. and Well, I'm going to say linking up, and now they somehow with these niggas down in Mississippi, the New Covenant guys, and then, you know what I'm saying, the graven images with the pop bottle head nigga Van Ashton. Now, you know, these Boston guys are taking on a New Covenant and the graven image thing. You know, it's just a big mess, man. You know, they have to change things. And you know what? That, that, that guy that's in head of the, uh, 
of the uh, man, bro. Like, because me and dude, we was real close. That was like, we was cool. Uh, Zion, Zayn from Boston, bro. He uh, he straight up told me he was on the phone. He told me straight forward. He said, yeah, man, one thing about when uh, guys leave or when things don't work, he said they got to change the doctrine. I can't really do a Boston accent, but he said they got to change the doctrine. The doctrine. Just like you did, bro. You know, you fell by your own sword. You even said that guys, things that don't work out for them, they have to change the doctrine to fit their rhetoric, man. And that's exactly what you're doing. Okay, and me personally, uh, you know, we didn't know what the hell happened and why he went left. We thought some, some bad shit happened, which technically it did, but we thinking that something else happened, you know. But find out this guy is going off in the scriptures. He could have a heathen wife, who knows, but... Regardless of it, man, you guys are accursed. Now let's go to verse 10. It says, for do I now persuade men or Yahweh? Or do I seek to please men? It says, for yet if I please men, I will not be the servant of Yahweh Shai. So this ain't got nothing to do with the hell you believe, man. This ain't about you. Okay, it says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. Meaning it's not of men's words or men's dealings. He says, for I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So that's the point, man. Okay. He's straight up telling you that he get his authority from Yahweh Shai. And you can say, well, yeah, everybody said that. But no, man, there's accounts of Paul being kicked off the horse and blinded for three days. Okay. And uh, I believe, was it Barnabas, if I'm not mistaken? Or no, not Barnabas. Uh, I forgot who gave him his sight back. We were just going over it the other day. But regardless of that, hey, it was witness account that the man was blinded okay because he's going to go down he says here but i certify you that the gospel which was preached of me is not out the man for neither i received it of men neither was i taught it but by the revelation of yahweh shah hamashiach it says for ye have heard of my conversion or conversation in times past in the jews religion that how beyond measure i persecute the church of yahweh and i wasted it and I profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals and my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased Yahweh, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not both flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and then returned again to Damascus, man. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. That's them in two weeks. But of the other apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. So he actually dealt with the Lord's brother and the head disciple. Okay. And these were top men in the truth. So you think if he wasn't authoritative and if he didn't get the approval of anything, let's just say this. Let's just say if he was just saying, okay, the Lord came to me X, Y, and Z. Let's just say if he didn't check him on any other of the apostles, right? Then it probably would have been questionable, like, all right, who is this guy? He's just coming up in the name of the Lord. And the Lord did say that if any man is teaching in a name and doing miracles, then forbade him not. Let him do what he got to do. But even then, if you're this fervent in the spirit, he sought counsel. And then he went up and dealt to be proven like, OK, yeah, this man is legit. So Peter, which was the Lord's right hand man, approved of it. So who the fuck are you? Because if you to say that his words was not authoritative, then you got to do away with all the gospel. You got to say the hell with the book of Peter. You got to say, well, hell with, we don't, we know you don't believe the, 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 the Hebrews anyway. Hebrews uh, was written, I believe, from Italy, from Timothy, which is another understudy of Paul. Okay. But uh, uh, you got to do away with the whole gospel. Matthews, Mark, Luke, John, all these men, you know, so. Uh, and it says, now the things which I write unto you, behold, before Yahweh, I lie not. But afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Sicilia and was unknown by face unto the church of Judea, which were in Yahweh Shai. But they had heard that which he persecuted us in times past, preached the faith, which once he destroyed and they glorify Yahweh in me because they saw him repented, man. So for him to give a whole breakdown, he gave you an account when he was going off into his conversion. If a man was being unauthoritative or just wicked, he wouldn't even give you that much detail. That's why Paul's letters were straight neutral. It was black and white, man. Straight bam here. No fucking gray areas, man. But like I said, you got men like this that come in and they want to establish their own righteousness. So anyway, Salakia, this is, a, this is an article I looked up. It says, where did Paul get his authority? Okay. 
um, and you got scholars that can convert us, man. It says, if Paul did not know Yahweh Shai while he lived on this earth, then how can Paul have any authority to teach and preach the gospel? It says, where did Paul get his authority? It says, though Paul did not walk with Yahweh Shai while he was on earth, he did receive approval from the followers of Yahweh Shai, which we just read, which was uh, Peter and James, the Lord's brother. Okay. It says here in Galatians chapters one and two, Paul explains that he took two different trips to Jerusalem to see the uh, the apostles. Why did he do that? Okay, because for one thing, it was the order and he had to check in with the head. Okay, and to make sure it was on point. That right there proves if, if he wasn't approved of Yahweh Shem Shah, Peter just would have told him, nah, fuck off, do your own thing. You going off, bro. We don't want you. Okay, but it says in his first trip, Paul mentions the most popular apostles by name. Peter and James in Galatia 1 and 8. I just read that and I'll read it again. Then three years later, I went up into Jerusalem to become acquainted with Cephas, which is Peter, which goes into rock. It says, and stay with him 15 days. Okay, so that's roughly two weeks. It says, but I did not see any of the apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Okay, but it says that Paul and Peter spent 15 days together. They must have discussed some very important matters. All right, all this other stuff. It says, what a sight of blah, blah, blah. As one of the scholars stated, they probably did not spend all of that time talking about weather. He said, it is likely that given in the context of Galatians 1, where Paul is discussing his authority to preach the gospel, that Peter and Paul discussed the content of the gospel during that time together. Bam. Trip 2. However, Paul also mentioned a second trip to Jerusalem. Galatians 2, verses 1 and 2. He says, then after the interview of 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. It says, it was because of the revelation that I went up and I submitted to them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. Because they wanted a report, like, okay, what's the deal? And it says, but I did so in private to those who were of reputation, for fear that I may be running or had run in vain. Right, so, hey, he was making sure he was on point to make sure he wasn't going off. Okay, it says, but in his second visit, Paul mentioned that he explicitly bought his gospel before Jerusalem apostles, Peter, James, and John. He indicates that he had a fear that I may be running or had run in vain. Some have speculated that Paul wanted to verify the content of his preaching to be sure that he was correct. That's on point. Okay, that's honest report right there. How can that not be some form of authority? Just the fact to be authoritative, you have to take responsibility. He's taking responsibility here. Okay, and it says here, Therefore, he goes up to Jerusalem a second time to see Peter, James, and John. Interestingly, the apostles respond in recognizing the grace uh, that had been given to me, James and Cephas, James and Peter and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship so that we may go to the Gentiles and they to be circumcised. So it was approved through the heads. For him to do what he was doing because they realized, okay, these are Israelites that he's speaking to. And he's just not converting heathen into our customs and telling niggas they can be saved without keeping a, uh, without coming into the full assurance of the law. Sure, he did teach that, well, hey, you don't have to keep the laws to get salvation, but you still have to keep the commandments because that's a custom. Okay, and he was teaching faith in Yahweh Shai. He never taught that the law was bad, but he taught faith over everything. Okay, because the newcomers that came into the faith... They wasn't familiar with the commandments, so therefore they was not going to walk perfectly in the commandments, if that makes sense. Okay. But anyway, um, it says, for I will have you to know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not according to men. It says, for I neither received it from men, nor was I taught it, but I received it through the revelation of Yahweh Shai. So Paul saw himself, well, Paul himself saw Yahweh Shai via revelation. On his account on the road of Damascus, which is Acts 9 chapter uh, and 22 and 26, in which Yahweh Shah revealed himself to Paul. And he was an eyewitness to the sense of having seen Yahweh Shah at his death, which is 1 Corinthians 9 and 1. Therefore, Paul certainly had the authority to teach and preach the gospel. Okay, so. It says no scholars today debate the fact that Paul actually wrote the gospel to the Galatians. It is dated around 49, 52 AD. So there's no dis disputation in that. All right. Let's look at 1 Corinthians uh, 9 and 1 real quick. and see what it goes here. Paul's use of liberty. It says, am I not apostle? It says, am I not free? It says, have I not have seen Yahweh Shai, our Lord? 
It says, are ye not my work in the Lord? Okay. So if I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you for the seal of my apostleship. Are ye in the Lord? It says, so my answer to them that do examine me, it says, have we not power to eat and drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister or wife as well as of the apostles and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? So that's the point, man. So you had the same argument in the church then. Oh, well, who are you? Who are you to come and display your authority over us? Who the hell are you? You were just killing us. You know, you always had that argument. So everything we're going through in the ministry now is nothing different than what they didn't went through 2000 years ago. OK, history repeats itself, man. All right. And one last precept. This is the book of uh, Romans 16 and 17. It says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them, Scopeo, which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. It says, for they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, but their own belly. And I believe them dudes sold out. OK, them do. Yeah, they good debaters and all this other shit. But at the end of the day, they lack lust of understanding the scriptures. It's very minuscule. Okay, they can sound deep and erratic and they can put you to flight in debate and bring out certain points and, you know, be on point with certain breakdowns. But overall, they lack the spirit and they have a very uh, basic understanding of the scriptures. They're not as deep as they make you think, man. Just because a nigga can hold a debate and win and woo the crowd doesn't make him a man of the Lord. All right. And it says here. For they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches to seize the hearts of the simple. Okay, so hey, I'm gonna end it here giving out praises and glory and honor and due to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bashim Rakakadash. Hey, man, hey, y'all better get the hell away from these guys, man. You know, you better start questioning the doctrine, start studying and praying and asking the Lord to give you, give you revelations, man. Don't just join a camp. Because you got a problem with somebody else in a different camp or because you uh, uh, you don't like the leadership or whatever it is. Well, I ain't going to join them or I'm going to go with them because I like them or because, you know, I have to get along with them. Fuck with this. Even though these men are teaching the truth, I don't want to be with them because, you know, I, I got a problem with them type shit. Well, you're just doing yourself a disservice, you know. So you guys that's around these group, Nate. I you watch all these other guys, man. Y'all better start questioning these leaders, man, and seeing where their minds are at and if they really have your best interests. But with that, Lord's way you edify it to the next lesson. Shalom.